Hi, welcome to this Corp Mars video. In this video, we're going to go through the video solutions to the VAT practice questions. If you need any extra help on VAT, if you go to corpmaths.com forward slash contents and you scroll down to video 400G, there's a video tutorial there on finding VAT. Alternatively, you can scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the VAT practice questions, so let's get started. So question number one. Question number one says a new bicycle costs £300 plus VAT at 20%. Work out the total cost of the bicycle. So the VAT is 20%, so we need to work out 20% of £300, and then add that on to find the total cost of the bicycle. So let's find 10% to begin with, so 10%. To find 10%, we divide by 10, so that will be £30. So then to find 20%, we'll double 10%, so doubling £30 would be £60. So that means that 20% of £300 is £60, so that means the VAT is £60. So if we do 300 plus £60, the total cost of the bicycle, including VAT, would be £360. And that's it. The answer would be £360. OK, let's have a look at our next question. OK, let's have a look at question number two. So question number two says, a gas bill is for £160 plus VAT at 5%. Calculate the VAT. So this time we just need to work out what the VAT is, and it's 5%. So if we can work out 5% of £160, that's our answer. So let's find 10%, first of all. So 10% of £160. Well, dividing by 10 to get 10% would be £16. 5% will be half of that. So if we half our £16, that would be 5%. So half of £16 is £8. So that means that 5% of £160 is £8. And that means the VAT is £8. So the question is that I calculate the VAT. The answer is £8. Okay, let's look at question number three. So question number three said, Josie buys a television that costs £425 plus VAT at 20%. Work out the total price of the television. So we need to work out what 20% of £425 is, and then we'll add that on to find the total cost of the television. So this is a calculator question, so I'm going to take my £425 and I'm going to divide it by 100. That'll tell me 1%, and that's equal to 4.25 or £4.25. And then because we want 20%, we'll do 4.25 multiplied by 20, and that's equal to 85. So that means that the VAT is £85. Now in this question, we're told to find the total price of the television. So it's £425 plus the VAT, so it's going to be £425 plus £85, and that's going to be equal to... £510. So the answer is £510. That's the total price of the television, including the VAT. OK, let's have a look at question number four. So question number four says, shown below is the price of a table. So we've got the price of a table is £289 plus VAT. And VAT is added at 20%. And we were asked to work out the cost of the table, including VAT. So we need to work out 20% of £289 and add that on. And that will be the cost of the table, including VAT. Now I'm going to do this question in two different ways to show you something else. So first of all, let's do it in the way where we take our £289 and we divide it by 100 to find 1%. And that would be equal to £2.89. So that's 1%. We want 20%. So we're going to do £2.89 multiplied by 20. And that will tell us what 20% is. So 2.89 multiplied by 20 equals... £57.80. So that means the VAT is £57.80. So that means if we do £289 plus the £57 ADP, that would tell us the cost of the table, including VAT. And that's equal to £346.80. So the cost of the table, including VAT, would be £346.80. So that's one way to do this question. Find 1% times by 20 to get 20% and then add that on to find the cost of the table. And that's one way to do this question. Now, if I was doing this question, and it's a calculator question, if I was doing this question, I would use a thing called a multiplier. And if I wanted to increase something by 20%, what I would do is I'd take what I'm increasing, the £289, and I would multiply it by. And because I'm increasing by 20%, I would start with 100%, I'd go by 20%, that's 120%. And as a decimal number, that is 1.2. So I would multiply by 1.2. And if I multiply this by 1.2, that would be equal to 289 multiplied by 1.2 is equal to 346 pound in ADP. So rather than getting the 20% and then adding it on, you could just multiply by 1.2 and that will increase it by 20% straight away. And that's called a multiplier. So you can do this question either way. You can either find what 1% is times it by 20 to get 20% and add that on. Or if you wanted to increase by 20%, you could multiply by 1.2. If we wanted to increase by 19%, you'd multiply by 1.19. If you wanted to increase by 5%, you would multiply by 1.05. If you wanted to increase by 25%, we would multiply by 1.25 and so on. So you just add on the percentage to 100, 
So add 5 to 100, so that would be 105, and then that would be 1.05 as a decimal. And that's our multiplier. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 5. Okay, let's have a look at question number 5. So Tamara finds two shops that sell the same photo frame. So shop A sells the photo frame, and the price is 19.99, so 19 pounds 99p, and the price includes VAT. And shop B sells the same photo frame for £17, but that price doesn't include VAT, but it'll need to be added on, and the rate of VAT is 20%. And the question says, which shop is better value for money? You must show you're working. So we need to go to shop B, and we need to increase this price by 20% to find the cost of the photo frame, including VAT. So let's take our £17 and let's divide it by 100. And that would be 1%, which is 0 0.17. And then take our 0 0.17 and multiply by 20, and that will be 20%. And whenever we do 0 0.17 multiplied by 20 on our calculator, that would be equal to 3.4 or £3.40. So that means the VAT is £3.40. So if we do 17 plus £3.40, that is equal to £20.40. So that means the photo frame in shop B costs £20.40. But in shop A, it's equal to 19.99. So which shop is better value? for money the answer is shop a and that's it so shop a is better value for money now in this question we could have done this in a different way we could have if we wanted to increase 17 pound by 20 percent we could have just taken our 17 and multiplied by 1.2 and that would be equal to 20.4 or in this case 20 pound and 40 pence so that would increase the 17 pound by 20 percent straight away by multiplying by 1.2 Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at question number six. So question number six says, Umar wants to buy six chairs for his dining table. And the shop has a special offer and it's buy two chairs, get one free. And each chair costs £85 plus VAT at 20%. And the question says, how much will Umar pay in total for the chairs? So he wants to buy six chairs. So that means that instead of buying two chairs and getting one free, which would be three chairs, he would want to buy four, because he would buy four chairs, and then he would get two free. And then that would give him the six chairs that he needs. So that means that Umar's going to be paying for four chairs. And let's find the cost of each chair. Each chair costs £85 plus VAT at 20%. So we need to increase £85 by 20%. So it's a non-calculator question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find 10%. So to find 10%, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 10. And £85 divided by 10 would be £8.50. So that's 10%. But we want 20%. So we're going to double that. And double £8.50 would be £17. So that means the VAT is £17, and that's going to be added on to the £85. So we're going to do £85 plus £17, and that's equal to £102. So that means each chair costs £102. Now, Umar is going to be buying four of them, and then he's going to be getting two free. So he needs to buy four of them. So we're going to do £102 multiplied by four. And whenever we do 102 multiplied by four, that would be equal to 408. Because four times 100 is 400, and four times two is eight, that's £408. And that means that he will pay £408 in total. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number seven. So question number seven says, Martha bought a new caravan. The cost of the caravan is £35,000 plus VAT at 20%. Martha pays a £15,000 deposit and the rest of the total cost over 48 equal monthly payments. Work out the amount of each monthly payment. So let's work out how much she needs to pay in total. So we need to increase the £35,000 by 20% because we need to add on that VAT. So let's take the £35,000 and answer a calculator question. I'm going to start off with actually not using a calculator. I'm going to find 10%. So 10% of £35,000 would be 3500 so that means that 20%, double that, would be equal to £7,000. Double in £3,500 is £7,000. So that means the VAT is £7,000. So if we take our £35,000 and we add our £7,000, that's equal to £42,000. So that means the cost of the caravan is £42,000. Now we could have just multiplied 35000 by 1.2 and that would have brought us straight to the £42,000. Now she pays a £15,000 deposit, so she pays that to begin with, so if we take the £42,000 and we take away £15,000, that's equal to, that would leave £27,000 left to pay, and she pays the rest of the total cost, the rest of that money, over 48 monthly payments. So if we divide that by 48, that would tell us the cost of each monthly payment. So £27,000 divided by 48, I'm going to grab my calculator here, and I'm going to do 27000 divided by 48, and that's equal to £562.50p. So each monthly payment should be making for four years would be £562.50p. And that's it. 
Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number eight. So in Germany, the cost of a watch is 120 euros plus VAT at 19%. Work out the total cost of the watch. So obviously here we're in Germany and the VAT isn't 20%, it's 19% at the time of writing this question. And the cost of the watch is 120 euros plus that VAT. So we need to work out 19% of the amount, that'll tell us the VAT, and then we'll add that on to find the cost of the watch, including VAT. So this is a calculator question. There's a couple of ways we can do this question. One approach is to take the 120 euros and divide it by 100 to get 1%, and that'll be equal to 1.2 or 1 euro 20. And then we're gonna multiply that by 19 to get 19%, so that's 1%. So we're gonna do 1 euro 20, multiply by 19, and that would be equal to, and that'll be equal to 22.8, or in this case, 22 euros and 80 cents. So that's the amount of the VAT. Now we need to add that onto the cost of the watch to find the total cost of the watch. So we're going to do 120 euros plus 22 euros and 80 cents. And the answer would be 142 euros and 80 cents. So the answer is 142 euros and 80 cents. And that's the cost of that watch in Germany, including the VAT at 19%. Now there was another way we could do this. It's a calculator question. So we could have just taken the 120 euros and multiplied it by the multiplier. We're increasing by 19%. So we've multiplied by 1.19. And that way again would be equal to 142 euros and 80 cents. So either one of those two approaches would work. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number nine. Okay, question number nine. So question number nine says, so if you bought a handbag in Italy for 250 euros plus VAT at 22%, calculate the VAT. Now this time we're just asked for the VAT, so we're trying to work out this 22%. We're not wanting to add it on to find the total cost of the handbag. So we need to work out 22% of 250, and that's how much the VAT would be. So if we take our 250 and divide that by 100 to get 1%, that would be equal to 2.5 or 2 euros 50. We would then multiply that by 22. So 2 euros 50 multiplied by 22 would be equal to 55 euros, and that's it. So that means that the VAT would be 55 euros. So that's one way to do this question. Another way to do this question is to use a multiplier, and it's a calculator question. So we would take our 250 euros, we want to find 22%, and 22% as a decimal number is 0.22. So if we multiply by 0.22, that will work out 22% straight away. So if you do 250 multiply by 0.22, you get 55. And that means that the VAT would be 55 euros. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at question number 10. So question number 10 says, Alan is buying pavement slabs for his garden. And below shows a diagram of his garden. And Alan's gonna be using square pavement slabs that measures 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. So we've got these square pavement slabs that are 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. And each pavement slab costs nine pounds plus VAT at 20% work out the total cost of the pavement slabs needed. So we need to work out the total cost of those pavement slabs. So what we need to do is work out how many pavement slabs he's going to need. So to do this, what I would do is I'd figure out how many pavement slabs he would need for this section, first of all, and then how many pavement slabs he'd need for this section, and then we can add them together to see how many pavement slabs he'd need in total. So let's start off with this section here, okay? So he's gonna be putting these square pavement slabs in rows, so he's gonna be putting a row of pavement slabs going across here. So let's see how many pavement slabs would go in this row. So each pavement slab is 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. And this is four meters, which is 400 centimeters. So let's see how many pavement slabs would fit in there. This is a calculator question, so you could just do 400 divided by 50 uh, on your calculator or in your head, 400 divided by 50 is eight. So that means that each row would have eight pavement slabs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's check that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So each row would have eight pavement slabs. And then if we figure out how many rows there would be, we could just times eight by how many rows there would be, and that tells us how many pavement slabs you would need. So in terms of how many rows there would be, the length of the garden is seven meters, which is 700 centimeters. And if we do 700, now these are square slabs, so if we do 700 divided by 50, the height of each slab, that would tell us how many slabs it would fit in this way, and that would tell us how many rows it would be. So 700 divided by 50, so 700 divided by 50 is equal to 14. So that means there's gonna be 14 rows, and in each row there was eight pavement slabs across, and there's gonna be 14 rows here. So there's gonna be 14 rows, so a row here, a row here, and so on, there'll be 14 rows in total. So that means there'll be 14 rows of eight. So if we do 14 times eight, that would tell us how many pavement slabs would fit in here. So if we do 14 
multiplied by 8, that's equal to 112. So it means that 112 pavement slabs would be in this section of his garden. Now let's look at this section of the garden. Well, in terms of the length, we know that the whole garden is 10 meters wide. Now in terms of this length, it's 4 meters, so that means that this bit would be 6 meters. So we've got 6 meters by 3 meters, and we need to see how many of these 50 centimeter slabs would fit in here. So in terms of each row, let's see how many pavement slabs would fit in each row. So if we do 6 meters, which is 600 centimeters, and divide that by 50, 600 divided by 50 is equal to 12. So that means that there's going to be 12 pavement slabs in each row. There's going to be 12 of them in there. And in terms of the number of rows, well, we would take our 3 meters, which is 300 centimeters, and we'll do 300 divided by the height of each slab, which is 50, and that's equal to 6. So that means there's going to be 6 rows of 12, and 6 times 12 is equal to 72. So that means it's going to be 72 pavement slabs in here because each row has 12 pavement slabs because 12 times 50 centimeters is the 6 meters and all together there'll be 6 rows of 12 and if we do 6 times 12 that's 72. So that means that he needs 112 for this section of the garden and 72 for this section of the garden so if we add them together 112 plus 72 that's equal to 184. So that means that all together Alan needs 184 pavement slabs. Now they cost £9 plus VAT at 20%. Let's find the cost of each one. So we're going to take our £9 and we're going to find 10%. So 10%. So 10% of £9. So £9 is 900 pence. If we divide it by 10, that's 90p. That's 90p. And then if we find 20%, we'll double that. Double 90p would be £1.80. So that means the VAT is £1.80. So we will add that onto the £9. So £9 plus £1.80 is equal to £10.80. So that means the cost of each pavement slab is £10.80. Now this is a calculator question, so instead of finding our 20% by dividing by 10 to get 10%, 90p in Dublin to get £1.80 and adding that on, we could have just taken our £9 and multiplied by 1.2 and that increases it by 20% straight away and that's equal to £10.80. So each pavement slab costs £10.80, so we need to buy 184 of them. So we'll just do 184 multiplied by £10.80 and that will be the total price of the slabs. So 184 multiplied by £10.80 is equal to £1,987.20p. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, let's have a look at question number 11. So question number 11 says, Natalie buys a new television and the cost of the television is £480, including VAT at 20%. So this time the price includes VAT. And we've been asked to work out the price of the television without VAT. Now this time what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a topic called reverse percentages. So make sure you've watched video 240 in corporate maths and you're confident with reverse percentages. So the cost of the television includes the VAT at 20%. So the cost of the television without VAT, let's let that be 100%. And when we add on the VAT of 20%, that would be 120%. And 120% is equual to £480. So 120% is £480. Now we want to find 100%, the cost of the television without the VAT. So what we want to do is we want to find 1%. So to find 1%, we're going to divide by 120. So we're going to divide by 120, and we're going to divide by 120. And if we divide both of these by 120, we'll get 1% and what it's equal to. Now 120 divided by 120 is 1%. And 480 divided by 120 would be 4, because 4 times 120 is 480. So we now know that 1% is equal to £4. Well, we want to find 100%, so we're going to multiply the both of these by 100. So multiply by 100 and multiply by 100. And 1% times 100 would be 100%. And 100% would be equal to 4 times 100 is £400. So that means the price of the television without VAT would be £400. And that means that there was £80 VAT. And if you work out 20% of this, you'll get that's £80. And that's then the VAT. Okay, so that's question 11. Okay, let's have a look at question number 12. So question number 12 says, Daniel buys 30 square metres of carpet, and the carpet costs £60 per square metre, including VAT at 20%. Work out how much VAT Daniel paid. Now, there's lots of different ways you can do this question. I'm going to do it using two different approaches. Now, there may be other approaches as well, but I'm going to show you two different approaches to do this question. So first of all, he buys 30 square meters of carpet and each square meter costs £60, including the VAT. So if we do 30 times 60, that would tell us the total amount that he pays. So 3 times 6 is 18, add on two zeros, so he pays £1,800 for the carpet. And the question says, work out how much VAT he paid. 
So you paid £1,800 for the carpet, and that would be 120% because the carpet was 100% to begin with, and we've added on the VAT of 20%. So we know that 120% is £1,800. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find what 10% is, and then I'm going to find what 100% would be. And then if I know what 100% is, the cost of the carpet without the VAT, we can then take that away to see how much VAT you paid. Because it's an uncalculated question, I'm going to divide both of them by 12. So I'm going to divide by 12 and divide by 12. 120% divided by 12 will be 10%. And then dividing 1,800 by 12, let's, let's do that. 1,800 divided by 12. 12 into 1 doesn't go, remainder 1. 12 into 18 goes once, remainder 6. And 12 into 60 goes 5 times. So whenever we divide 1,800 by 12, the answer would be 150 pound. So that's 10%. Now if we multiply that by 10 and multiply by 10, that'll be 100%. So 100% is equal to 1,500. So the cost of the carpet without VAT is 1,500 pound. Now he paid 1,800, so if we do 1,800 minus the 1,500, that means that he paid 300 pound of VAT. And that's it, 300 pound. Okay, so that's one way you could have done that question. Let's have a look at another way. At this point here, whenever we had the 120% was equal to 1,800, so in other words, whenever we multiply 60 by 30 to get the total amount he paid, and we knew that was 120%, so the cost of the carpet plus the VAT, rather than finding 100%, we could have just found 20%, because the VAT is 20%. So what we could do is we could divide by 12 and divide by 12, and we know from dividing both of these by 12 already that that would be 10% is equal to 150 50 pound and then at this point rather than getting 100 we could have just doubled this so times by two and times by two and that would have told us 20 percent was equal to 300 pound and that's another way you could have done this question and actually one other way you could have done it is and this would be what i would have done would have been i would have got the grand total which is the 1800 which is 120 percent and to get from 120 percent to 20 percent you can just divide by six because if you divide 120 by 6, you get 20. So if you just take the 1,800 and divide that by 6, that's equal to 300. And that would have been a quick way to get the VAT also, just divide the total by 6. And that works if the VAT is 20%. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So the next question says, Frank buys a desk that costs £1,497. Must be quite a good desk. And this includes VAT at the rate of 20%. Calculate the amount of VAT that Frank paid. So uh, we've got a couple of different ways you can do this. It's a calculator question. So we know that that's the cost included in VAT. So we know that's 120% and that's equal to £1,497. We could find 1% by dividing by 120 and dividing by 120. And if we do that, we get 1% is equal to, and 1,497 divided by 120 is equal to 12.475. Now that's 1%. We can at this point either times this by 100 to get 100%, so that's the cost of the desk without the VAT, or we could just times by 20 here to get what the VAT is. Now we want to find just the amount of VAT that he paid. So at this point, you could just times by 20, so times by 20 to get 20%. And if you times this by 20, you'll find what the VAT is. So times them by 20 would be equal to 249 pound and 50p. So that means the VAT was 249 pound and 50 pence. And another way you could have done this question would have been whenever we got 1% to times both of these by 100, and that would have given you that 100% was equal to £1,247.50p. And if you take that away from what he paid, so if you do 1497 take away and 1247pp that would be equal to £249.50. So that's another way you could have done this question. Now this is a calculator question and there are other ways to do this question. So here's another approach. We could have taken the amount of money that the desk cost to begin with and then that would have been times by the multiplier of 1.2. So whenever we multiplied it by the multiplier, that would have given us the cost of the desk included in VAT, which was £1,497. So if we worked backwards and divided by 1.2, so if we divided by 1.2, that would have given us the cost of the desk excluding VAT, which would being £1,247.50p. And then you could just take those away. You could do the 1497 subtract £1,247, 
and 50 pence. And again, that would have been 249 pound and 50 P. There's another way you could have done this question. Or there is another approach. And if the VAT is 20%, then that would be 120%. And you want to find what 20% is, the amount of VAT. So to get from 120 to 20%, you can just divide by six. So if you just divide this by six, you'll get 249 pound and 50 pence. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Question number 14. So question number 14 says, a watch costs £42, including VAT at a rate of 20%. How much is the watch without VAT? So that's going to be, well, we know that whenever we have the cost of the watch, which is 100%, and we increase that by 20%, the VAT, that would be 120%, and that's equal to £42. Now we know that 120% is equal to £42. We could divide by 120 and divide by 120, and that would tell us what 1% is. So if we divide 120% by 120, that's 1%, and that would be equal to, and on our calculator, £42 divided by 120 is equal to 0.35. So if we then multiply by 100 and multiply by 100, we can find the cost of the watch without VAT. So one times 100 is 100%, the cost of the watch without VAT, and 0.35 times 100 would be 35 pound. So that means that the watch would have cost 35 pound without VAT, and that's it. Now there are other ways you could have done this question. We could have taken our 42 pound and divided it by the multiplier, which would be 1.2, and that would also be 35 pound, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 15. So question number 15 says, George spends 96 euros and 80 cents on a pair of shoes while on holiday in Spain. And this price includes a VAT at a rate of 21%. Work out how much the shoes cost without VAT. So let's do this in two different approaches. Let's say, well, the cost of the shoes to begin with without any VAT is 100%. Add on the VAT would be 121%. And that's equal to 96 euros and 80 cents. Now we want to find our 100%, the cost of the shoes without VAT. So let's divide by 121 and divide by 121 to find out what 1% would be. So 121% divided by 121 would be 1%. And then 96 euros 80 divided by 121 is equal to 0.8. So 0.8 euros. Okay, so that's 1%. We now need to find 100%, the cost of the shoes without the VAT. So times by 100 and times by 100. And 1 times 100, 1% times 100 is 100%. And then 0.8 times 100 would be 80 euros. So the cost of the shoes without VAT would be 80 euros. So that's one way you could have done this question. Another way would have been to divide by the multiplier. To the multiplier we would have used would have been multiplied by 1.21 to increase the price by 21%. So if we take our 96 euros and 80 cents, and if we divide it by 1.21, that would be equal to 80. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 16. Okay, let's have a look at question number 16. So question number 16 says, the VAT rate in Ireland is 23%. And the cost of a toaster, including VAT, is 43 euros and 5 cents. Find the cost of the toaster without VAT. So in this question, it's quite similar to the ones we've done previously. Um, I actually do use the other approach to begin with this time. I'm going to take my 43 euros and 5 cents, and I'm going to divide it by the multiplier. If we wanted to increase by 23%, we would have times by 1.23. So we would have taken the price of the toaster without VAT, and we would have multiplied it by 1.23, and that would have given us the cost of the toaster, including VAT. So if we divide by 1.23, that will be the price of the toaster without VAT. So it is equal to 35 euros. So the cost of the toaster without VAT would be 35 euros. Okay, another way to do this question would be, well, the cost of the toaster to begin with, let's let that be 100%. We then increase that by 23%. So we get 123% and that's equal to 43 euros and 5 cents, the cost they paid for the toaster. Let's find 1% by dividing by 123. So divide by 123 and then divide by 123. And when we do that, we get 0.35 euros or 35 cents. And then we want to find 100% the price of the toaster without VAT. So times by 100 and times by 100 would give us 100% is equal to 35 euros. And that's it. I actually like this approach to dividing by the multiplier. I just found it quite straightforward. Okay, let's have a look at our last question. So question number 17. Okay, let's have a look at question number 17. So question number 17 says, Jessica bought a new computer and the price includes VAT at a rate of 20%. So she buys a new computer and the price includes the VAT and the rate of the VAT is 20%. And Jessica divides the price by an integer to find the amount of VAT paid. So she divides it by an integer and then that tells her the amount of VAT paid. And you've got to circle the integer. So did she divide it by three? Did she divide it by four? 
or did she divide it by five or did she divide it by six now if you've watched this video through and you've watched my other questions i think on two or three occasions i've already talked about this number now if we let the cost of the computer without vat be 100 percent whenever she adds the vat of 20 percent that would be 120 percent so that'd be 120 percent now we want to find the VAT, and the VAT is 20%. So in other words, what would we need to divide 120% by to get to 20%? And to get from 120% to 20%, we would divide by six. So that means that Jessica divided the total price by six to get the VAT, and that's it. So Jessica divided by six. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the VAT practice questions. I really hope you find this video useful. If you need any extra help on VAT, if you can go to corpmaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video 400G, that's the video tutorial on VAT. Also, it might be worthwhile watching that video tutorial on reverse percentages, which was video 240. And if you watch video 240, that'd be useful as well. So I really hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. And thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.